First of all, this is the AT300 saddle. Uh, I tested it, not that bad really, uh, but it looks ugly. You can cut yourself on it. So I don't like that, so I would like to, to make it more presentable, so to speak. So I will then mill off to get it a little bit better. So uh, that's a product in itself now. So one side finished. Uh, I uh, took out here with an end mill. Uh, and then I finished off with a ball nose cutter, so I kind of blended in here. I think uh, that is an improvement over what was, and also around the corners, because this will now be more presentable. So I'll then take out this side also, and then the second side. Um, I think it's much nicer to work with now that it's squared up and cleaned off all the rag and uh, let's say parts that they didn't bother to, to machine. Uh, of course it'll take um, or it took me at least one hour so um, uh, then the machine would have been that much more expensive. It's not anything to do with uh, accuracy just let's say uh, niceness to handle this casting so more importantly how do they measure and this one of course being scraped as you can see so I will test that Doesn't sit well, but not that bad either. I mean, uh, there's a lot uh, almost covering on this side, so not too bad really, but could be a bit better. And then um, the next. I don't know if you see what I see, but um, here is some smaller particles here. I don't want to get rid of. Okay, and now this guy. Of course, this is just a relief area over here, but we can test it anyhow. We can test the side here just to see if it sits. It sits without rock. Good. And loose up, not too bad really. <laughs> and the other side. Too bad, shabby that either. See one spot over there, higher than the others.
at all, really. These two, of course, will be depressed inwards. So, um, therefore, we can test it. No, uh, then we will test the dovetails, of course. See, quite flat all over. Shiny spot there. Could be that it's the one that prevents this from uh, meeting there. Another. In the middle. So it's high there, but anyway. And the top ground surface here is, I would say, absolutely flat. It's a minor, minor flow there. So, okay, good. So, compared to a Myford, uh, let's say small industrial scale machine and a uh, hobby lathe, maybe upper class hobby lathe, this belongs to what must be, let's say, uh, the worst. <laughs> At least, this is the uh, infamous Chinese generic combination machine, three in one combination machine. Uh, but, it's actually not too bad. Uh, it's a bit rough uh, machined or uh, lack of machining on parts that doesn't need machining, but it's not that much out of square or um, as I find it too hopeless to work with. Uh, I remember the class we had uh, with Richard King in Georgia where we brought uh, different uh, objects, I mean, from our own, let's say, hobby sphere and one guy bought um, brought a um, I think it was a shop task 1720 machine uh, another of these uh, combination machines maybe a little bit upscale from this but at least I remember that the, the casting he had um, inherently had a lot of sand in it so it dulled the blade a lot that's also what you can expect from this but from a geometrically uh, or machine point of view, I find that this, for example, being the the top of the top slide here is totally flat. Uh, sorry, the top of the cross slide. And uh, it's accurately machined. It will rest sufficiently good on sufficiently uh, i mean this is this t uh, should tell me that it is probably a little bit out but not much but you have a, a milled surface here that is flat and the same here and covers on i'd say a lot of the the surface so all it remains is to see whether or not it is square so if i for example, back up one plate like so against it and then test with shims here. I would then be able to see whether or not it is square and I already have done so and found that this is actually pretty darn good on this side also, which is of course what is important. It's okay. Um, this, of course, now doesn't need um, to be tested that way. It's just an example, because you can lay it flat here. And then I've tested and found that all corners here are okay, really. So all it needs is an improvement of the scraped surface. But the point of having this as a reference, this size as reference, is, of course, then here to be able to set it conveniently onto the granite plate here and test these surfaces here the dovetails and i'm doing so on both ways so i can test from here to here and up here and here actually or i can if i know this is uh, precisely the opposite or the in plane with this i can test the other way here 
don't need to do actually exactly that because this is the gib side so here is my side to be tested so that's convenient to know uh, at least setting that aside we'll have a look at the um, at the um, now i think uh, more convenient to handle because i machined it uh, saddle which is where you also have the same it's a little bit high in the middle here you can see but sufficiently um, accurately machined to be tested here on the doll tails um, and the opposite side is also true uh, I can test here if I want to and that's convenient and that's a little bit of a surprise since it was so badly machined really but that this is really not too bad from a machining point of view and from an accuracy point of view you can even uh, test the other surfaces here putting it like on this side testing it to see whether this has good enough qualities and you can see the problem sometimes is that some of the surfaces are a little bit high on one corner maybe being uh, manhandled malhandled so that it is high there now if i take that down then i have a flat surface then i can see if that surface is in plane for example with this and then assumption would be that this can be then used here towards this also it is nice then here that these surfaces which are of course relief but that they can also be used so everything here can be uh, used for, as a reference or to test other surfaces so that that's nice if if they can be for example the top here if that is parallel with these ways i can test it directly to here otherwise i put of course these on on uh, blocks to test here on the precision blocks but it's uh, it's a uh, one of the let's say the worst machines out there i think but also one of the most popular among hobbyists so it could be worthwhile for me to show this and to others then to know and see that you're not far off taking a class with richard will then explain uh, what is needed to be done and then he will guide you through and as i said one of the guys in the georgia class i think he he made it through his uh, 1720 combination machine in the course of that week we had the class so then uh, if you bring your parts then you'll be i mean it's it, the, the learning curve is is fantastically steep but also enjoyable and um, you will then end up with the end of that week with knowledge that you would be fighting years uh, in other scenarios to get and also with the machine that is 10 times as accurate and, and good as you came in with